What it is, what's up, got your armor review in the cut, and oh my gosh, I love doing these so, so very much. Uh, by the way, just as a disclaimer, uh, as for armor football, I have long transitioned from the energetic, uh, puppy-like fascination with armor football to the, uh, the cynical individual uh, a long time ago. So if you do come in here expecting the uh raving mad literally foam in the mouth auburn fan um that won't be me so i just want to just want to save your time now uh also it's not gonna be any gimmicks pulled here i'm not gonna do any crazy it's gonna be looking this game uh there will be some sfw language as you would expect um after a game like this where you got uh throat fucked uh to be quite blunt uh for for four quarters really um from the very beginning damn near Uh, especially in second half i will also add around the beginning of this game i was grocery shopping so i didn't really start following this game hard body until late first half i think i watched pretty much all the second half i thought i wasn't locked in as i think you would expect with a game that embarrassing I am an Auburn fan. I've been an Auburn fan since 20... I mean, I've been an Auburn fan my whole life, but in terms of watching the games ardently, I would say 20, 2009, about 2009 or so. So 14 years now, I've seen the 2012 forms with UL, so ULM. I have saw the 2015 game against Jacksonville State. The 2018 game against Mercer, which I had very high levels of IQ on that day. 2017 game against Mercer, um, where I came in, I got a funnel cake, and I left before it became a rainy monsoon. And I believe a 14 to six win for Auburn, uh, which is very ugly, very ugly game. I think the next one would have been 2021 against Georgia State where they probably lose. They don't put in T.J. Finley. Uh, Bo Nitz, Heisman winner, uh, was completely shaken uh, again that game. And I think that's the last one. Those are the, the the four big ones that come to mind right now. If there's any other ones you can think of, feel free to mention in the comments. Since 2009. Uh, this was, I would say, from the third quarter on, well, let's just say in the third quarter, the most obvious, like, threatening one Outside of, I would I would say the ULM one would be lower on the list here in terms of like threatening the 2015 game. They basically like I think Jacksonville State got reft out of that one. The 2018 Mercer game that's the lowest on the list in terms of like just when did you think you were going to lose? That one was the lowest on the list. It was just a turnover fest. Like we had five turnovers in that game. The 2021 uh, Georgia State game, which I was at, I think. I think I was at that game. Um, no, no, I was there in the first half and I left at halftime. There we go. Um, that one would probably probably be second. I think Jacksonville State would be first. I think that would be second. You alone would be third. All of that, you can just move down a spot because this one was number one by far. I would say from third quarter, you kind of had a good feeling that you were not winning this game. Just because like the nature of the drives. Look at the scoring drives here. 526, 602, 524, and this was the killer. This one right here was started, I think, mid third quarter. By nature of the time, the scoring uh, drive ended and the time, it had to be like pretty late third quarter to mid third quarter. You knew once that one was getting into the red zone that there probably was not going to be a win to be had. However, at first, they lined up for the field goal formation, which if they got that field goal, it would have been. 20, it would have been still within two scores. I think it would have been 20 to 7. I think it would have been 20 to 7. So 20 to 7, you only need two touchdowns. And you kind of, are you pretty much hoping that Auburn defense can do something that it didn't really do for quite a while? The third quarter, they just got pushed around. So it would have pretty much been a prayer that they would have won that game. Much less scored two touchdowns in the game where they scored one touchdown. And this one touchdown was like Fairweather was opening it in a seam route and like never really got 
not open. He was pretty much open the entire route. This this was an anomaly, as you can imagine, by the fact he scored no more touchdowns for the rest of the day. But everything else is hard and very hard for them to earn. As you can tell here, uh, Peyton Thorne had went 15 19 for 148 yards. I believe two of them at least were drops. One's a drop to, I think, Johnson. And there's another drop I mentioned somewhere. Seven, this is the most concerning one. 17 to 38. Which means, so this 38 yards Peyton Thorne had, if you look at their total rushing um, output, 65. He had over half of their rushing output. And um, uh, part of the reason why they lean on him so heavily is because this right here. Uh, more than anything, they just didn't have the ball that much. They got outpassed for nine attempts, and then they got outran for 11 attempts. So you just fast that into the probably more Jarquez rushes, probably a few more Peyton Thorne passes. However, uh, the offensive line got murdered, uh, absolutely destroyed. Uh, let's see, where are the sack numbers at? Sack numbers, not here. This is important here. Just look at this. They got outpossessed by 17 minutes in a 60 minute game. They only had the ball for 21 minutes. They had almost as many turnover or penalties. A uh, turnover was clean, although there were some that could have went either way. Um, just completely hosed and ran the ball. I mean, just destroyed. Almost an exact game for Auburn, who was supposed to have all this talent. Uh, almost an exact mirror in passing attack. So pretty much it came down to the running game where they got out. I don't know. Out, what do you want to say? Outworked? Beat the fuck up? I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. It, it happened. You know, that, that's what happened. Let me make sure I'm still. I, I won't be doing this video again. So I just make sure I was still um, legible. Audio-wise, third down efficiency, they were 50% from third down. We were 20%. Uh, quick maths. And uh, 50% in the fourth down. They had two massive fourth downs. One was a punt, and the other was a uh, fourth down where they just went for it. Initially did a fake field goal where they probably would have got on the fake field goal. Took a timeout, lined up and did it again, and then they got the fourth down. <laughs> so just, they just completely demolished Auburn. They... If you like have ever watched Berserk, uh, the beginning of Berserk where Griffith becomes evil and uh, has a little bit of a scene with uh, the female lead in that series, her name is, I believe, uh, Casca. Have you ever seen Griffith's scene with Casca? That's what happened here. Uh, <laughs> that's, I'm not laughing. at That's a very brutal scene. I'm laughing at the the parallel because it's it's so honest. That that's what happens here. Uh, Auburn was Costco. Griffith uh, did something very 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 wrong to Costco, and Georgia State did something very 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 wrong to Auburn today. And uh, guts was the Auburn fan base uh, watching the violation occur. Uh, this would have been Auburn's 800th win as a program ever. Did not happen. And it would have been, I believe, Auburn's 50th straight win against a unranked non-con. I don't know how that's even possible because I'm pretty sure we've lost unranked non-cons, but I don't know. I guess we haven't. Um, this would have been that, and it was not that, obviously. Just total brutalization. Uh, Auburn's number one recruit, if he committed, uh, Cam Coleman, was in attendance on an unofficial for this game, and um, he got to watch Auburn get choked the fuck out uh, live on national television. So we'll just give this this recap here. Oh yeah, another statistic. Um, the last two twenty one point underdogs to win by twenty one points, Auburn against New Mexico State, November eighteenth, two thousand twenty three, and then New Mexico State against Liberty, whose head coach was Hubert Freeze. Uh, last season on the way out for Hugh at that point. So I guess we want to get like some real, some real takeaways here. Where, where should I start? Uh, number one, let me get some water real quick. Mm-hmm. 
Bo Nix is going to win a Heisman. And uh, no, I'm not going to start that. Um, Auburn decided to employ a head coach named Hugh Freeze uh, this time last year. A guy was at Liberty, had some some pretty good success. Not nothing, you know, of UCF's levels of Group of Five. Uh, nothing like. Um, I mean, I would say even Coastal Carolina, although I think they played in a bowl game. I think Liberty won the Coastal Carolina. I would say to me had a little bit more success, but you know, you're pretty much splitting hairs. They both are pretty much relevant around the same time. Had comparable levels of success, so you know. But not, not not UCF level, right? Not not that level. Not Boise State in two thousands, but just a good Power Five team, but maybe even great. But uh, on the way out that last season, they were horrible. Uh, outside of them being Arkansas, who uh, was a complete misnomer for Auburn fans and believing uh, the hype about their program, but that was last year's Arkansas team. This year's Arkansas team also sucks. <laughs> Both sucked uh, actually, and. Um, I thought that Arkansas win, they they had some pretty ugly losses down the stretch. People blamed it on Hugh being, you know, one foot at the door, uh, basically whoring himself out for the Auburn job. And um, the players were supposedly very receptive to that. Now, I would, I, I would and I have argued that Hugh Freeze always loses the kind of uplifting type game for a season. Uh, 2013... They went, I believe, nine and four, something like that. Plus, against a Auburn team coming off a three win season, uh, it was in Jordan Hare Stadium, but they lost that game. Twenty fourteen, uh, lost to Auburn when they were number three in the playoff rankings. Um, that Auburn team was going to lose every other game of the season, I believe. And then you go to twenty fifteen, where the maybe the best Ole Miss team up until the last couple for Blaine Kiffin, uh, somehow fails to make the SEC championship. I believe they had an unranked loss against a, a loss against an unranked Mississippi State team that pushed them out of Atlanta. A season where they beat Alabama for the second second of the year, by the way. And uh, 2016, they were god awful, which I didn't watch 2016 Ole Miss very much, but some people who did uh, actually are surprised that that season is getting brought up more often. I guess because the sanctions doesn't get mentioned too often, but people are sometimes surprised that it doesn't get brought up. I've seen people who did watch them that were surprised about that, right? So a lot of disappointment in prime position those old Miss years under who you freeze. Uh, Liberty never really had like the undefeated season that you know you might have expected from a Liberty guy has much more resources than majority of five programs, especially now where a lot of those have moved up to power five conferences. And uh, Hugh Freeze, who's supposed to have this insane pedigree, you know, being Nick Saban, being Nick Saban, and, of course, being Nick Saban, pretty much carrying his uh, his repertoire, so to speak. So, not an amazing head coach hire, I would say, to me, to me. I felt like more like a Gus Malzahn adjacent, Gus who beat Hugh the majority of his times matching up against him. And then you take in the fact that he's, uh, probably one of the worst, I won't say the worst, but one of the worst uh, people that happened to coach in the college, collegiate football level, which says a lot, you know, DJ Durkin, Zach Smith, all these very horrible people. He's not exactly, he didn't kill anybody, you know, he's not DJ Durkin level, uh, but, you know, he's up there, right? Like, he's, he's pretty far up there. So, you may think, like, this is me saying, Hugh needs to be fired or whatever. And I'm not saying that. I don't think he should have been hired, but I'm not saying he should you know, be fired. However, I would ask myself why a guy that's that bundle, that, you know, all of that, why did he get paid $6 million plus to to come to Auburn? I, I don't – who's Auburn bid against? If you want to, like, look it up, nobody. They weren't bidding as nobody. Nobody wanted Hugh Freeze uh, as, a, as a coaching candidate. So – it doesn't matter like there's question mark bubbles over my head right now. Auburn paid top dollar. I think he was in the top 20 of coaching candidates in terms of annual salary, if not higher, for a guy who hadn't been good in the SEC in six years, seven years, um, who wasn't the greatest group of five coach out there, 
and who was an abominable person at his previous stop, stops, plural. And all that just made me sit here and say, okay, well, you know, it's their money, do whatever you want to do with it, but it doesn't look like prime program management to just, again, whore yourself out for Hugh Freeze. But that's what Auburn was left at after Lane Kiffin turned him down. So they pretty much, as I understand, had Lane Kiffin or Hugh in mind. There was no real third option. It was just those two. And um, they got their guy. The boosters got their guy. They got Hugh Freeze. So it's wonderful stuff overall. Um, number two, number three, and the second takeaway. Uh, Auburn uh, played some really fucking terrible teams these last few matchups. And unfortunately, you know, I, you know, I scream out to the dark sometimes, so hope somebody listens. I understand that I got a massive platform in uh, social media, in YouTube, you know, a- anywhere when it comes to Auburn uh, listeners. And I'm okay with that. I don't really care. But I, I did try to do this because I knew there was going to be a moment where realization occurred. And I thought the moment would be next week when Alabama, who has one of the best pass rushes in the collegiate football, saw our very rudimentary offense and uh, just decided to like, shut that shit down. I would not have ever thought it would be this week <laughs> where the imaginations and fascinations of an eight and four season where Auburn's looking at a top end bowl game amongst, you know, kind of middling teams. I I didn't want that dream to pop so early for Auburn fans, but it, it's there. It's popped, shattered, strewn around the uh, the atmosphere now, flung up into space. The bubble's gone completely. Uh, Auburn played Mississippi State, who fired their coach, and who I believe won one conference game against one of the teams I'll mention just a second here. Their head coach died, R.P. Mike Leach. And the team was pretty much schemed around that head coach's almost impossible to recreate scheme, offensively especially. And unfortunately, you know, going with an entirely different scheme and a holistically different scheme led to a very bad program. That team fucking stinks. <laughs> so there you go from that team that fucking stinked to Vanderbilt who this is a better Vanderbilt team than some past Vanderbilt teams, but their quarterback uh, got hurt early in the season. And um, they have like one fourth of their stadium even accessible because they're doing renovations and they're Vanderbilt and uh, Vanderbilt sucks ass as a program of football forever. They will forever suck ass. And Auburn lit up for quite a while that, that game. I want to mention, by the way, a big chunk of that game, Auburn struggled after getting up early. I just want to mention that. So Arkansas, the the moment where it's supposed to all come together, complete performance, show out, blow out. Stan Pittman might at that point might have been fired, you know, at least was being discussed about being fired. They were even thinking about getting Gus Mouse on, who didn't want the job. Um their players were watching Polar Express at halftime. I mean, just they lost Arkansas, lost three to seven against Mississippi State. Guy from the Mississippi State team that fired their head coach after ten games. I believe nine games actually, um, and that's supposed to be the, the the switch being flipped. Auburn beating the fuck out of a terrible ass team. Supposed to be the switch being flipped. I try to tell dudes, listen, man, <laughs> listen, don't look into that. I tried, man. I tried. <laughs> I tried my best because I was like, hey, this team looked completely incompetent offensively against everybody that was worthwhile. And unfortunately, I don't think Alabama is closer to Arkansas and Mississippi State than they are to California and LSU and Ole Miss. And but nobody listened, um, unfortunately. So we get to this point now where there's a ton of rabid Auburn fans who are very correctly, very rightfully pissed about losing to a fucking terrible. Uh, well, I won't say fucking terrible. They're a really good group of five team. However, the talent in comparison to Auburn, who was top 20th, and I think it's the ethereal blue chip ratio that you can find on Rivals.com. Uh, the Rivals are 247, one of the two. And this ephemeral top 20 blue chip ratio uh, ladder 
Auburn is 18th and New Mexico State is not 18th. And you would have thought New Mexico State was first. They, you would have thought they were Georgia, the way they came into uh, Jordan Hare Stadium and, and basically burned the fucking thing down <laughs> like the British did to the uh, the council. The council? The U.S. Um, capital, U.S. capital, all those centuries ago. Horrible game, horrible performance, horrible on every level. Um, I will say that the talent is not the best in the world. However, uh, Hugh Freeze was fucking terrible in this game. Uh, Philip Montgomery is not good at his job. At least his job is in being Auburn's offensive coordinator. Uh, the defensive coordinator, Ron Roberts, who apparently got into a spat at some point with um, Wesley McGriff, a very uh, esteemed assistant coach in the SEC. Somehow I got in a spat with him. And, um, you know, it was my way of the highways, I understand, with Ron Roberts. Well, this defensive line was put on the highway and ran the fuck over multiple times on New Mexico State. So it was not his way, but it was, in fact, the highway today. And um, even the special teams, they had a most punt late where they were trying to storm some horse shit comeback. Um, New Mexico State had the fake punt that basically broke the game open. So... Yeah, every facet, Auburn was beaten down and just pissed on gasoline pee, basically. Imagine burning pee. That was, they were pissed on with that. Just completely lit a light. And it, I can't even, like, express to you how bad this game was. Anybody who, like, was just, like, checking the score and saw, oh, this is burner game week. This is pre robbery week. Uh, everybody's going to come out there and beat the hell out of the, the teams that are paying billions of dollars to play. Uh, Auburn paid their $1.5 million to New Mexico State, but they didn't win that game. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's just a reset now. How long have we been going? 17 minutes? 22? What is it here? Uh, it's a reset in expectations. I don't think it's Alabama's ULM game because Nick Saban was one of the best coaches in the sport before that game and before that season. And uh, Hugh Freeze was not that before this game or before that season. He was okay. He was good, I would say, but nothing better than good. And um, they say he also won a title at LSU, made LSU basically what LSU is now, a prestigious program. Uh, Ole Miss actually exceeded Hugh Freeze's uh, ability to perform when Lane Kiffin came along. So there's that. And um, Cam Coleman, man, you got to – you got to hope for the kid who loves just money and nothing really more than that. You got to hope there's money can speak louder than uh, that embarrassment. That's that's really all you can hope for is that money, the home field advantage, more money can uh, matter more to Cam Coleman than uh, a competent show. Because, I mean, he was committed to A&M and our, his, no, his runner up was Auburn. So I guess he's really love, uh, love competency. He just loves money and a starting job. So. He does have a certain job. These receivers are terrible, and some of them are even leaving after this year. So it might even get worse if we don't have an influx of talent, although we do have a lot of talented recruits coming in and some young guys that may improve. Um, we need a lot of Perry Thompsons. And there's two five-star receivers that could be coming to Auburn, and hopefully they do because they're needed sorely. I don't know if they have the money to afford both of them, but they need to find the money quick because. This shit is not getting any better unless you get some real winners here. Hugh Freeze is not going to coach a middling Auburn team up to be like top echelon SEC. That's that. That's not going to happen. They're not going to just be basically the idealized version of what Brian Harsh is supposed to be. Basically, Brian Harsh comes in, takes a high floor, low ceiling Auburn program, and Capisi's Alabama and Georgia and all these dudes. He phrases it doing that shit. <laughs> it's not happening. He doesn't have the ability to do it. And if his coach has the ability to do it, it's not fucking happening. They're going to make the talent work. And so far, the talent has been working in this recruiting cycle. But it's going to be even better. It can't just be top 10. It needs to be top. I don't want to say top five and curse somebody. You know, feel somebody feel cursed about it. Like, oh, my God, he's spoiling our chances of getting this type of class. It probably needs to be close to top five than his top 10, honestly. 
for Hugh Freeze to go out there and win some of these games. Look at that shit, dude. It's a 25 and a... <laughs> Look at that, man. That's crazy, dude. That's crazy. That really is crazy. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, Auburn is a train wreck. And I've been closer to a train wreck, or offensively at least, against most common teams they've played. And they're back to that now. But have they really ever left that stage? That is the question.